So before we go into it, we always like to look at the uh, product supplied. I, I apologize if I sound stuffy, just obviously the, the fun of spring and allergies. So when we look at uh, what is happening in, uh, and again, this is looking at finished motor gasoline, uh, jet fuel, distillate residual fuel, because we want to look at the mobility stocks. We can talk about uh, the other oils, but these <laughs> these shows are already long, and, and that's just going to add another wrinkle. So again, there's a lot of volatility in that, but we want to look at U.S. product uh, supplied. So the current week was at 14.618 million barrels a day versus last week of 14.357, which again, as we said last week, makes sense. You know, we we expected to see that gasoline pop. We expected to see an increase in distillate, uh, you know, as some of that makeup number. But when you look at it, we had the same thing in 2021. You know, we're we're so far tracking 2021 almost perfectly, just for different reasons. You know, at Distillate has come down, gasoline has come up versus, and again, this is talking about versus 2021. So we're, but we're, we're in that level. So when you start looking at trucking, trucking is going to remain under a bit of pressure. We're now below where we were in 2021. We don't see that coming back all too quickly. So then it comes down to, well, where do we go from here on the gasoline front? And that's where pricing comes in and will show pricing versus last year, just to give an idea of some of that pain. Uh, so the average, again, is holding pretty much in line with where we were in 2021, and we don't see that changing really through the remainder of the, uh, you know, we, we'll get one more bump, obviously, for uh, for spring break as, as that travel uh, comes to an end. But again, those are some of those benefits that we're going to continue to see, and that'll uh, keep us kind of, let's call it fixed in terms of, uh, in terms of where things are versus 2021. So then when we start looking at the distillate draw here, you, you can see that we had the distillate drop of about 2.66 million. That's 26 million below the five-year average with the lion's share of that being obviously still in pad one with the drop of 17 point, uh, the drop of 2.65 million in pad one, bringing a 17.5 million below the five-year average. You know, when you start looking at some of those different backdrops, pad two, pad three, still slightly below the five-year, but fairly in line. It's really that pad one. So now as trucking starts to come down, uh, remains depressed, you, you we now kind of, let's call it officially move out of, or at least hopefully officially move out of heating season. That's where you're going to start to see some of that come back up. And that's where pad one will be able to close some of that gap. The issue is obviously when you look at Russian imports, we've been, we prior to the Ukrainian, uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we were importing a decent amount of Russian diesel into the uh, U.S. market through Pad 1 or the East Coast, and that's not something that's coming back. So again, you're going to see some of that balancing act. Uh, imports were down 50,000 barrels. Uh, you know, that's, that's still uh, just below the five-year average. We expect to see that remain fairly stable with Pad 1 seeing a, a fairly normal flow. Now, typically, when you look at the distillate drop, and this is going over the last 29 years, you see some of this flatlining. We still remain at a, in a very bullish spot. We're still at the low end. We do expect to see some of this flattening, but exports are going to remain elevated because the market is pricing them in. There's, you're going to try to take advantage of that. And as that flatlines, again, you're, you're going to see refiners trying to target this cut but they also have to manage the gasoline front. And right now the gasoline front is allowing them to, to uh, increase some of those runs. So we do expect to see this flatlining. Even though we're going to see an increase in refinery runs targeting this, because demand is still a, a bit elevated, because we have exports, we expect to stay in a fairly bullish uh, backdrop and below that 29-year average line. Now, this is what we were talking about with that bounce back to the five year. We were expecting to see a little bit of an, uh, a little bit more of an increase. So just because of that, we, we have one more uh, one more nice move up. And then we expect to see this much closer to the five year average, especially when you look at where trucking is. And we'll talk about that in, a, uh, in, the, in this slide where here you can see we're now well below where we were in 2021 on an average basis. We're at 102. You know, we expect to see some of this flatlining here, but when you start looking at freight waves and some of the data, we're going to talk in the econ show. There is more pressure. There's, uh, you know, as inventories have been built up, as retail sales have slowed, 
although some of these guys are looking to to or I should say guys and companies some of these companies are looking to take a little bit of a pause which is which could send us down one more time but even as we come back up or I should say kind of flatline, we're still going to be at, at 2020 highs and we're going to still be elevated versus the previous few years, but we're not going to be back to those 2021 levels, which again is when you start looking at the difference between 2021 and 20, uh, 2022 demand, gasoline is going to be a bit better versus 2021 while diesel, excuse me, is going to be a bit worse. And, and that's going. that's why we're essentially tracking fairly close to where we were versus 2021. Now, when we look at rail, uh, rail uh, is continuing to be a bit of an issue. I don't know if, if you've uh, seen, but I know we've talked about it on both Twitter and in Insights that CF uh, was told, CF Industries was told that they're going to have to cut their nitrogen uh, going into the market. Uh, on on rail, UNP told them to cut about 20% of nitrogen loads. And then uh, U.S. Silica has just come out and said that they're increasing the price of prop and sand by 25% starting May 15th. So again, that's where that those prices continue to go up. Uh, when you look at total car loads, they're down 6.8%. And then uh, everything is down now. Grain is down. Uh, there's, it's gonna be, that's going to be a bit lumpiness depending on where things are because 2021 was so elevated versus historics. Uh, metallic ores, uh, motor vehicles still kind of flat. Uh, petroleum, petroleum products, and then obviously intermodal continues to be weak. Uh, and, uh, and just based on what we're seeing, we don't see that changing uh, in the near term. As some of these, uh, as some of these, lo- uh, these new loads continue to slow. Now, one of the things when you look at what is coming into the U.S., it's it's a bit off of the previous year, but still elevated in terms of historics. Obviously, we all know that there's a massive lockdowns in China that will create a kind of this lull, if you will, at our coast, but. Because of the shipping timing delay, we still haven't really absorbed that. So we still have elevated numbers. You can see going into May, we're above the previous year, we're above the previous week. That's still going to remain elevated. But as you get further into the end of May and June, that's when those lockdowns start to show up on the coast. And we'll see some of that drop off. And then obviously, we'll see some of that increase. But when you look at the shelves, look at supplies, <laughs> We're, we're still running tight on the supply chain. So what's happening in uh, in China is obviously going to become a bigger issue when you look at our supply chain, our costs, our inputs. But that's also going to cause a big drop in trucking and then should get a bigger spike. But again, that drop will come further in May and really uh, you know proceed through kind of June, that June period, which will keep some of those headwinds in place. Here's what we were talking about on the weather side. Uh, things on the East Coast have gotten either near normal or above normal. That's, again, going to uh, to shift down some of that demand, which will keep, uh, again, that heating side lower. We still won't need the cooling side, so you're going to get some of that balance between you're not turning on the AC, you're not turning on the heat. So, again, you, uh, the heat might click on once or twice in the night. But again, you're not seeing some of that demand, which will put additional distillate in pad one storage. Now, shifting gears a bit to gasoline, here you can see that gasoline fell 276,000 barrels. That's 7.4 million below the five-year average, but that huge spike is obviously from 2021. Uh, I'm from 2020, when you kind of back that out, things are fairly normal. They're right in line with uh, just below where we were in 2021. And we don't see that deviating too much. Uh, you know, Pad 1 had a, a sizable drop of 1.71 million barrels. That's a drop of 10.1 million. So if you take away that Pad 1, we're, we're right back to kind of that comfortable level. And the reason why I say, quote unquote, take away is because at any point in time, they could go out and close that gap from pad uh, from Europe. It's just going to be a matter. Uh, they also want to manage that storage as well. So there's really no rush right now, given where prices are. As, as we come into uh, summer driving, we should see some of that increase. And we're already starting to see that uptick as we talked about with uh, with gasoline imports increasing to over 220, uh, 228,000 barrels a day. And as we said last week, we expected imports to increase. Imports increased 158,000 barrels a day. That's still 159,000 below the five-year average. We expect that to increase and pad one to be the key driver of that. 
And again, uh, Pad 1 had an increase of 64,000 barrels a day, bringing us to about 400,000. We do expect that to approach closer to 500 over the next week or two. Now, when you look at um, at the storage level, again, we're not saying anything crazy. When you look at the uh, at, at the 29 year average, we typically get a flat lining here. We do expect that to be the case, just because. And uh, again, not to begrudge the point, but we do have demand that has been a bit softer versus 2021. But uh, yeah, but. At the same time, you're starting to see some of that balancing act. You're seeing some of that increase, but you are seeing a bigger uh, focus on the distillate cut. Uh, the distillate cut had uh, on a production side increased to about 30.6% of yield, where uh, gasoline had a, a bigger drop to about uh, fell by about 1%. And they're going to try to do that because distillate's going to be the focus. But as you inherently create more distillate, you inherently also create gasoline. So again, that's going to keep uh, some of that storage level elevated. And then when you start looking at global mobi mobility, you know things picked back up in China a bit as you had that uh, the CCP focusing on trying to take away some of those. Uh, those roadblocks trying to move some of that through you had a little bit of a reversal you know obviously uh, with things moving uh, in increasing by anywhere between one and four percent and uh, the Americas you can see that was a nice increase of four percent in the Google mobility side and a lot of that was really driven by uh, obviously Easter you know you had Passover you had some of those increases and now as we come back out of that and out of spring break you'll see things flatline and not that they drop, it's just they kind of stay here. Same with Europe, and uh, and then you'll start to see the Asia Pacific come down just a bit. Obviously, Ramadan is going to continue to be a bit a bit of a driver. Some of these areas are coming out of uh, of some of their lockdowns, so you see a little bit of that movement, and then we expect that to level off just below normal as we go through the remainder of the spring. Now, when you look at uh, at, at daily uh, pricing here, you can see that uh, gasoline prices bounced from about 4.07, so about $4.07 to about $4.11. We do expect that to move back up, not only because the crude prices have gone back up, but also because it gets more expensive because that that official turning point or when you have to drive summer grade, excuse me, Memorial Day weekend, which is more expensive. And then when you look at uh, diesel prices, diesel still continues to be over five dollars and it started to see some of that appreciation. We don't see that stopping anytime soon. On the blending component side, uh, you know, we had a drop of 2.76 million. That's only 3.8 million off the five-year average. But again, that is skewed from 2020. Uh, from 2020, we're right where we were in 2021, and we just expect it to see some of this normalcy as we go through, and then we'll start to see some of that get pulled out and put into that summer blend. Uh, looking at gasoline demand, you can see that we're tracking 2021 almost perfectly, slightly below, but we do expect to be a bit above 2021. We'll see another uh, positive increase just because, again, spring break. But then the distillate side coming down, that's why we're going to continue to see some of that softness versus 2021. We do expect to see uh, and, and hold to pretty close to where we were last year. And uh, obviously, Parks are getting a bit better, grocery stores, pharmacy stores, retail, recreation, workplaces come down, obviously for the holidays. So again, that's that's where we're gonna get a bit more activity and then it'll start to level off. Now, when you look at propane, propane had another build of 1.63 million. That's only 6.7 million below the five-year average. You know, the rate of change has increased uh, and now we're back to where we were in 2017. Still on the bullish front, but again, you're starting to see some of that uh, that come back up. But we also, when you start looking at, at uh, exports, exports drop just because, again, there's only so much room. So we do expect exports to increase. We do, uh, we have seen a supply response, but we're still in a fairly comfortable spot where pricing will remain robust. Here, you can see that uh, supply for uh, propane is increased. We're now back above where we were in obviously 2018 and as well as in 2016. So again, you're still seeing some of that, that movement and that'll continue to move higher. Now, when we look at jet fuel, jet fuel had a build of 450,000 barrels. And then when you look at demand, demand, uh, you typically get that spike, obviously, again, for the holidays, and then they come back down. Here, the, the spike, you know, was a bit softer. And now we, we still st are staying kind of in this comfort range that we've talked about between that 1.45 1 
to 1.55. We'll get one more increase just because we will get an inc- uh, a spike for people coming back from spring break. And then you'll get some of that lull as we go through the remainder of, uh, of April into early May. And here's what you're seeing here. You can see in 2019, you kind of get that little bit of a lull and then you get that increase through May. And then you kind of peak between that June, the end of June into July for that 4th of July weekend. And then you kind of see that start to decline. Again, we're going to see the, it's going to match the typical seasonal move just at a percentage lower. And that's when we look at we're not the you know the we still have lower highs we still have lower lows versus 2019, and remember 2019 was even slower than 2018, but again we're just, we're just gonna see that increase as we get into the end of May as we get into Memorial Day and beyond. That's when you're gonna see that just drift a bit higher versus where uh, where we were on a seasonal basis, just at a step down. Now, when we look at uh, at 12-week passengers ahead, uh, it's still it's 0.3% lower week on week with cuts remaining minimal. I, I, we don't see that changing. Everything has been fairly stable. Trying to cut more flights as a result of mass cancellations. As that comes back, you'll start to see this improve just a bit. Uh, when we look at open table, uh, again, we expect to be just about anywhere between zero to five percent better during the weekends and then weekday. Uh, I'm sorry, weekdays, weekends, anywhere between ten to fifteen percent better, just because of some of that skew from twenty nine uh, from from twenty nineteen versus twenty twenty. So again, that's just kind of where we sit, but still a decent amount of activity in terms of going out. And sitting outside, it has gotten nice out, obviously. So now that we've gone through the U.S., we want to go abroad, look at where demand is on a holistic level and what Russia is trying to do by getting some of this product into the market.